hey and welcome back. This isn't the video that I thought I'd be making today. Um, however, things change as we know. So today's video is a vlog all about setting up my little handmade leather business on Etsy. Now, unfortunately, after all the time and effort I took into researching, learning, planning and building up the shop, I took a deeper dive into the Etsy story that's currently all over the news here in the UK and I decided to close it down two days after launching it. Now, if you're here just to find out more about why I made that decision and what I'm doing instead, please scoot forward to the timestamp that is currently on the screen. Um, but if, however, you fancy just hanging out with me for a while and watching the whole adventure from start to finish, then kick back, relax, and here we go. So this side turned out really well, but this side it hasn't. So I'm going to finish the edges off, um, burnish them and make them nice and smooth and shiny. But that one will have to be saved for a second sale. I like the orange stitching though. That's kind of cool. I'm going to get some um, green thread as well. I think green on this colour leather would just be delicious. So to burnish the other edges, you've got a, this wooden thing, which is called an edge burnisher and you get this stuff here which is a well they call it a burnishing gum but it's like a well, that's exactly what it is it's a burnishing gum <laughs> who am I to say something different and all you do is you dab it on the edges of your leather like that rub it in and you need to go quite easy with it you don't want to get it all over the wallet and then you take this thing rub it rub it rub it rub it And I like to go along the edges as well. It just kind of pushes the edges over. And then look at that finish. Wow, that is beautiful. If I do say so myself. And that's just four layers of leather. So two here and then two pockets sewn on. That's how thick and shiny and glossy it becomes. It's so gorgeous. And it smells amazing. I think I'm going to go and put some um, YouTube or Netflix or something on <clears throat> just to give my brain something else to do right now. As I finish these off, I've also got the blue one and the brown one to finish off too. Uh, and then I need to sit down at the computer and get everything. Oh no, then I need to do photos. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'm going to stop talking to the camera now. <laughs> I'll catch up with you guys later. Ta-ta! Welcome back to another crappy day in Cornwall. Um, I have been up for a very long time and it's only six in the morning. So I think I'm gonna have a little bit of a crash later. The exciting news of the moment is that my little Etsy shop opened yesterday, or it launched yesterday. It's actually been open for a couple of weeks, but don't tell anyone. I just didn't give anyone the link because I just wanted to build stuff up and make it look pretty. And I love it. You should see my logo. Oh my God, it's so cute actually. There you go. That's my logo. How gorgeous is that? I've got a thing for beetles at the moment. Uh, if you've ever seen videos of me in my kitchen in the last uh, six months, you might have noticed that I've got a giant dung beetle <laughs> over my hob. Not a real one for the record. It's just a painting. Uh, anyway, I'm sat here, obviously, with an early morning coffee. And look, I'm packaging up some orders. Really cute. These are cable tidies in here, if you wonder why there's two gold blobs inside their bag. Uh, this is from my buddy Hugh. He ordered um, two cable tidies with the gold clasps. We've got four different colours in the cable tidy range, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I 
promise this isn't going to become a sales channel like yes welcome to qvc today we're selling these wonderful cable tidies anyway so yesterday i launched i was about an hour late i planned to get it launched at midday didn't happen everything has conspired against me this week oh there's a spider climbing up my wall right in front of my face hi buddy we need to talk about spiders at some point in the future I have an interesting video to put together for you. Who knew that you could get over a phobia, a lifelong phobia, at my advanced age in life? Anyway, sidetrack Jane, hang on, let me drink some coffee. Maybe that's why we're waffling. Oh, God damn. That sip, that first sip of the day, that's the one. So I need to pack up my little parcels. I made three sales yesterday, uh, which I'm really pleased with. I'm really, really pleased with. Uh, it's a great start. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to wrap my first parcels. Actually, that's not actually true because I did have an order on the shop. Like I said, I opened the shop a couple of weeks ago um, and one guy came in and ordered a feather key ring. Um, so thank you, whoever you are. Um, and he just found me through Etsy because I hadn't shared the link with anybody. It wasn't, it was a live shop, but it wasn't out there on Tinternets. So I think possibly he just found me through um, Etsy search, which is great. Um, but saying that, if that guy is actually one of you, then I'd love to know. Please let me know down below. I'd love to think one of you guys hunted me down <laughs> and snuck in the shop before anybody even knew it was there. That was really cool. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up Hugh's cable tidies um, and a couple more orders. Oh, would you like to see the other orders? There was a Kate and a Catherine, um, and I don't remember which of you ordered the silver one or the bronze one, um, but here, girls, here's your key rings. Thank you so much, everybody, for your little orders. I'm so happy. Uh, so yes, let's drink coffee and wrap presents. How fun. <laughs> percent winging the packaging I kind of have it in my head what I want to do um, but okay I'm totally practicing on your parcel hope you don't mind well that looks crappy <laughs> So should not be doing this on camera, should I? I should be like perfectly packaged, like all those beautiful YouTube videos where people do their packing orders. This is me learning, learning on the job, quite literally. <laughs> all I know is that I want people to be able to put their packaging straight into their home compost. I don't want it to cost loads of money because that's just gonna push the price up. I don't want any plastic in there. I mean, I don't hate that. Where's my little sticker? I am a little bit concerned about these stickers. Obviously the backing has got plastic on. I'm gonna have to stick one of these little thank you stickers into my home compost and see if it actually breaks down. But they are really very cute. I mean, we are going for the whole rustic handmaidness. You cannot deny that that looks rustic. <laughs> we are just off to the gym. I won't take you. Nobody needs to witness that. I'm going to go and do two classes because I'm such a good girl i'm doing yoga and then i'm doing half hour functional fitness class two which makes this girl sweat and then we're going to come back and i will mostly be working on a website today on building a new website i have decided that i'm leaving etsy i was there for two days and i'm done i no longer want to support etsy i dislike that company intensely so let me go and get my sweat on and then I'll explain 
all about all of that. Oh dear, I'm just driving along the track to go to the gym and can you see there's a little baby bunny down there. Hey little bunny, are you okay? This isn't normal behaviour, is it bunny? Eat this sweetie. Oh, this isn't good. Um, what's better? Oh sweetheart. This is so strange. It doesn't appear to have myxomatosis, which is good because that is vile. Oh darling. I have given it a quick little once over. I couldn't see any blood, puncture wounds, anything like that. I don't hold out much hope for this. Um, it's obviously in a heck of a lot of shock, if not very, very sick. So it probably means it's not going to last very long. But I'm just going to put a little bowl of water in here and then go and put it somewhere cool and in the shade. Right Myrtle, where were we? Oh. Just got back. Feeling slightly sick and slightly headachey, perfectly normal after going to the gym, unfortunately. Just checked on our little bunny friend and he slash she is still alive. Um, and actually there's some movement coming from the cat crate. Hey bunny, are you back with us? Oh no, no, she's cold. Okay, we will dispatch. I know I'm a soppy gal, but that never gets easier. Excuse the noise of the noisy hog. Uh, this is the lunch we're making, a veggie jambalaya, which hopefully is going to be delicious. And this is from my beautiful friend Pips, the Slimming Foodie in One Cookbook. And it's the first time I've made this recipe, but now I have marked it as mine. Sorry about that, Pip. Although I like to think that's a sign of a well-loved cookbook when it's got splashes <laughs> all over it. So yay, go and buy Pip's book. This is her third. She's like, she's like crazy good. She's crazy, crazy good. And even if you don't want to buy her book, there she is. Isn't she beautiful? I love you, Pip. Even if you don't want to buy her book or you don't have the funds, go and check out her website, slimmingfoodie.com. She's got billions of recipes on there and they're all, I think it's 600 calories or less. Hurrah! So this needs half an hour now to do its thing. Oh, I'm so looking forward to this one. Done. Not part of the recipe at all, but I had this little can of corn that was out of date in 2021. So I thought, hey, this is a great time to use that up. So I threw that in two. And I've also got this avocado. That's most of an avocado, the rest of it, unfortunately, I had to throw away, but that's the bit that's okay. I'll put a bit of salt and lime juice on that. Uh, and I'm going to serve that on the side along with another little wedge of lime to squeeze over this. Here it is. Looks delish. Okay, let's talk Etsy. Now, before we start, I have quite a strong code of ethics when it comes to talking about other businesses through my various online platforms. I have to feel particularly strongly about a cause for me to go public with it. But honestly, this situation with Etsy has me hopping mad. On July 31st, 2023, the BBC ran a story titled Etsy accused of destroying sellers by withholding money. I kind of heard about it, but honestly, I see a lot of people moaning about things online, so I didn't give it an awful lot of thought. I'd spent the past couple of months studying everything I could find out about building a successful shop on Etsy. Um, how SEO works, the image sizing, national and international shipping options, packaging, branding, and how it all tied into my current business. And I also obviously made a heap of stock too. Now I launched my shop on Friday the 4th of August and a couple of days before I heard the grumbles about Etsy and how they were holding on to seller's funds. After wasting a whole day looking into alternatives, I just took a deep breath and let it go. My shop was built, it was mostly stocked with all my hard work, and I just decided to get through launch. Launch day was great fun, there was a lot of love and support for my community and friends, and I even made some sales, hurrah! Then that weekend, as I was packaging orders, I joined a Facebook group for Etsy sellers, and then I fell down the rabbit hole that led to this video. So basically, it turns out that Etsy had a quote been putting 75% of a seller's takings on hold for 45 days, leaving these small, often one person businesses with no cash flow to buy materials, to make more orders, or leaving us to use credit cards and family loans to keep food on the table. 
This all from a company that makes its money from small businesses selling products on their website. It was at that point that I started scrolling through the Facebook group that I joined and reading some of the other sellers stories, um, some of whom had been with Etsy for over a decade and they were just horror story after horror story after horror story and I just want to read you a couple of them. You make your own mind up. I'm obviously not going to share the people's names because it's written in a private group but I do think that sharing their story is actually really really important because Etsy have behaved really badly so I'm just going to read you a couple. See what you think. I'm so heartbroken. Etsy has suspended my account and no explanation given. I've been with them for over 10 years. Thousands of sales and thousands of five star reviews and they shut me down. I've done nothing wrong. I've never had any issues. They still have my money too, which I can't access. I've tried to contact but seem, can't seem to find an email. The only thing I can do is file a complaint and wait up to two weeks, but I've heard sometimes they don't even get back to you. This was my only selling platform and income devastated is an understatement. Somebody else says, Etsy permanently suspended my account a month ago but got back to me today and said it was done in error and they've reinstated my account. I now have 80 overdue orders that Etsy fully refunded. I've lost $4,000 in revenue and now have tons of negative reviews from people who never got their items because I was locked out of my account and couldn't do anything. Plus they were refunding all my orders so I wasn't going to fill 80 orders out of pocket. How is this a way to run a business? And finally, the last one, my account access has been limited, as in no access whatsoever, due to a suspicious login. Happened on Friday night and I submitted a help request. Got a response on Saturday asking a bunch of questions to verify my identity. I answered those immediately and 50 plus hours later, still no response. We sold over $600,000 on Etsy last year. It's our primary selling platform. I have employees and their families who depend on me and I can't do anything. I've done nothing wrong. I am not suspended, yet I'm still not allowed to access my store. Now, if I was a business called Etsy and this seller here had sold over $600,000 worth of product, bearing in mind that Etsy gets paid because of people like this and the commission, the high commission that they cream off the top, I would be sending this woman a bunch of flowers every week. I would be laying out the red carpet for her, not closing down her shop and not even talking to her. What is wrong with them? Anyway, it was after reading all of this that I'm like, do you know what? I want nothing to do with this company. Even if I never got suspended and even if I always got paid on time, I don't care. They are not having any more of my trade. I won't buy on there anymore. I think it's appalling what they've done. And even if they reverse all of this now and they go back to being the Etsy that we all used to love and use, I don't care. They've burnt their bridges with me. Mm -mm. Oh, it feels good to have a rant sometimes, doesn't it? So in answer to the question, what am I going to do next? Well, again, I went round and round the houses with that one. Um, I might just pop a little list down below for anyone else that's in a similar situation or thinking of starting up a shop um, of some options. Um, there are two roads to take when it comes to setting up an online shop. The reason that I took Etsy was because they, they are a search engine by themselves and they have a heck of a lot of footfall they get a lot of traffic to that website so as so long as your seo is good and so long as all your listings and photos are good there's a really good chance that you're going to get some of their traffic onto your products and make sales um but i'm also lucky enough to have you know quite a social following i've got quite a few followers especially over on pinterest i've got over 130,000 followers i believe on pinterest um and then on facebook and twitter and instagram and obviously i've got you guys that watch my videos too so i'm kind of in a lucky position that i have an audience online so because i can't go with etsy i'm just going to try and wing it and do it myself i have also joined a website here in the uk called the great no the British Craft House. I always get that wrong. And they are doing really, really well out of Etsy making all these cock ups right now. They don't have the footfall. They do not have the traffic um, that Etsy does, obviously. I think they're four years old, um, but the woman that's uh, running it, Susan, I think she's called, she is, she's all, all on it. She's pushing out the PR and the marketing. She's really, really building up this website quite quickly. 
I have started an account with them and I've even paid, I think it's £12 a month. I've even paid for a month on there, but um, I think I've honestly decided just to fully go my own route at this point. So I've set up a Squarespace website. For those that don't know me, I actually have a website already. It's a recipe or food blog called hedgecomers.com. So I've bought the domain name hedgecomers.shop and I've built this really quick and easy to build website on Squarespace. So I've got hedgecomers.com, which is my main website, which is wordpress.org. And that's where I make the most of my income through the ad revenue. Um, and then I've got, I'll be linking to my new shop, hedgecomers.shop, which is just a very simple e-commerce site that costs, I think it's 25 pound a month. Can't remember. I'll put all the details down below. Um, if you want to go and have a look, I did also find a few other really interesting options that I think would have worked well for me too. But eventually I just decided on, let's just do a website. Um, because that was always the plan, even with Etsy, let's do Etsy for six months, a year, two years until I've got some kind of traction and following, um, and business with the leather because I'm so new to it. Um, and then I would have started pushing people over to, um, my own website. I so saw, I'm just removing Etsy from that and I'm just doing my own website from the start. I have no idea if that's the right thing to do. I, I really don't know. I really don't know. Anyway, there you go. That's my story. I would love to hear down below if you are on Etsy, if you've had trouble with Etsy, if you're never going to shop on Etsy again, all of the things. Uh, any horror stories, drop them down below. Uh, everybody else that's thinking of setting up a shop, go and read the comments down below. Very often you find so many gems in the comments of YouTube videos on a topic very specific like this. So you might find some really good ideas from other sellers um, down below as well. But for now, I must dash because my friend is taking me out for lunch, which is lovely. So I will see you guys in the next video. Mwah! Peace.